I, if you can still hear me, I guess um, we can kick off the, the discussions. Uh, thank you all for, for dialing in. Um, for, first disclaimer, uh, this is the first time I am having a poster session in a virtual conference. So um, we're going to be a little bit improvising here. Uh, it's a, definitely different than just standing next to a real poster and uh, having people passing by. Um, on my side, I am part of the mathematical modeling and uh, artificial intelligence team of KPMG Switzerland. And um, I'm based in, uh, in Zurich. Um, and uh, well, this, uh, this session is about uh, uh, the way we approach uh, optimization problems. Um, as I was mentioning before, uh, in the past few years, Python has matured a lot, both from a probabilistic programming perspective, but also uh, for what concerns the integration and the interfaces to solvers, such as, for example, Groby, but also open source solvers. Um, both Groby Pi and Pyomo do a good job. So I think that uh, from a application perspective, uh, our methodological approach uh, is becoming definitely something viable. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot less glue code that needs to be put together to have a model up and running. So I think this is probably a reasonable way to approach the scissor science problems in. Uh, a context of a uh, high uncertainty. Um, do you have any 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 question, or shall I just uh, skim through the the content of this uh, poster? All right, uh, I saw a a sign of uh, feedback. But are you able to 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 also speak, or did uh, you or have you been cut off? From Yes, you, can you hear me now? I, I can hear you, yes. Yeah, because uh, I have to activate the microphone. Okay, okay. okay, um, okay. Uh, I, I didn't uh, want to, to make confusion with voice, so I silenced it. It's, uh, okay. It, it, it's okay, that's, that's helpful. Um, I, I, still want, I still need to get some feedback from time to time if I'm still still okay. there if I'm going in the right direction. So please don't, uh, don't be shy. Okay, okay, thank you. All right, so I think the feedback was if it's okay if we go through the content of this, um, uh, this, uh, this session and then perhaps if you have uh, some, uh, some questions, uh, at any time feel free to interrupt me. All right, so the idea is that uh, um, we are often working on optimization problems and uh, optimization problems can be, for example, well, uh, find the optimal price for a portfolio of products. Um, in, in this particular use case, uh, we have helped a company, an industrial distributor, a company that uh, purchases industrial goods in Asia and resells them in Europe, find the optimal price. And the definition of the optimal price there was a price that was maximizing the revenues um, after the application of transportation and storage costs. And um, interestingly enough, we started from the bottom and we have built uh, what is called the comp uh, company value driver stream. We tried uh, from um, a modeling perspective to break down their uh, target matrix or NOSTAR metric, I was also called uh, in, in some other context, uh, into um, its components. Uh, the optimal uh, price is, uh, is uh, the result of the calculation of the revenues and the uh, calculation of the optimization cost, of the transportation costs. The, uh, the transportation costs are based on, uh, on a shipping strategy. The shipping strategy itself depends on some uh, optimization parameters that include the volume, how much you would like to transport, when, uh, the lead times, um, the transportation and storage cost. Then in, in the setup, the client had uh, 
to approach different uh, manufacturers that had different factories. Then she uh, go, goods had to be shipped close to the coast, and from the coast had to be shipped to um, uh, by by boat to Europe to distribution centers, and from distribution centers to then fly. And uh, the question was, uh, well, uh, how do we deal with uncertainty? And one way to deal with uncertainty is that when you're running an optimization problem, you have to factor in and, uh, information from the distribution of the optimization parameters. And uh, one way to define the uh, or estimate the, the distribution is by having a generative model. The generative model takes in some input. Input can be um, internal data, such as, for example, historical sales data or information about the marketing promotional strategy, but also external data, microeconomic, for example, the price of competitors or macroeconomic. You can have some macroeconomic indicators, for example, unemployment. You can have uh, some information about commodity prices. And there, here, what you build is uh, is a generative model that spits out the, the distribution. In this case, of the volume, you might have a second model that focuses on the transportation and the storage costs. Um, from um, uh, from an, uh, um, a business perspective, the, um, this helps because uh, um, stakeholders that come from the business can have a look at these, uh, uh, the structure of this model and somehow understand uh, what, how things have been calculated. They understand the revenues, they understand uh, what drivers uh, led to the revenues, they understand the transportation costs, what drivers uh, led to transportation costs. And uh, this is one of the first advantage. The second advantage is that uh, you're not bound to distributions that are easy to handle analytically. Uh, the classic Gaussian, but what you can have is you can have a fat tail distributions. Um, and then you're able also to, to have, uh, for example, uh, catastrophe and rare events modeling inbuilt in your, in your model. Uh, we said that the uh, optimization parameters are produced with uh, probabilistic programming. Um, I don't know if you are familiar uh, with uh, the concept of uh, probabilistic programming. But the, the main takeaway is that uh, what you want to have is, is a generative model that takes in uh, priors in a vision sense about uh, uh, the, the drivers. You can uh, use uh, some, uh, some data and combine them to produce a distribution of the optimization parameters. I guess one, uh, one of the, uh, the interesting thing from, uh, from a Python perspective is that the frameworks have uh, matured a lot. You can have uh, PyMC, you can have uh, Pyro, you can have Edwards. Uh, there's, um, they come with uh, their pros and cons, but depending on your needs uh, and uh, modeling preferences, it's, it's really a lot easier to set up. A probabilistic programming, a probabilistic program for the uh, key optimization parameters. Um, I guess also that uh, uh, the, the topic is, uh, is really interesting at the moment because I feel that uh, um, variational inference made uh, a, a big step forward. Um, from a computational perspective, it's a the existing algorithms at the moment are a lot more efficient than what we had uh, five, six years ago. Um, debugging is a lot easier. Uh, modern frameworks come with uh, all the tools you need to follow the traces in the probabilistic program so that you're able to see um, what happens under the hood and debug things. And uh, once you have uh, the optimization parameters, uh, what you can do is you can uh, take uh, your, uh, your, uh, your results. For example, you can, via uh, uh, Monte Carlo, get a, an approximation of 
and then an estimation of the uh, key um, optimization parameters. And uh, you can plug that, that input, the data uh, into a, um, for in this case, what we had uh, was a mixed integer linear program. And uh, from there, you can uh, calculate uh, an optimal uh, uh, solution. Uh, we're talking about, for example, how, um, how we should transport goods from point A to point B. And you can have a, a either a robust or a stochastic programming um, uh, setup. I think that uh, from, um, um, from an implementation perspective, uh, stochastic programming in, in this, uh, with this methodological approach comes out uh, right out of the box. It's also, it's also if depending on the uh, number of uh, variables and the complexity of your uh, optimization problem, you might also want to um, record your uh, problem as uh, a robust optimization problem by defining the deterministic equivalent of your of your problem. And one of the frequently asked questions there is where do, do you really need all these probabilistic programming to write your deterministic equivalent? Um, yeah, my answer generally is uh, yes, you need to get there. You need to get the feeling for, for example, the first moments of, a, of a, an optimization parameter so that then you can encode it is um, a, as a deterministic equivalent using, for example, uh, an, an elliptic formulation. And then when, when it comes to the optimal solution, I, I guess the things uh, probably you realize that rather quickly are relatively straightforward because what you have is the transportation cost given the volume estimate at a given price. You have the price, you have the volume, you have a transportation cost. And uh, there's not really a lot more than that in this current use case. but. Uh, um, I guess uh, the, the exciting part is really the combination of probabilistic programming and uh, the uh, robust or stochastic programming. Any, any questions so far? Not for me, Mattia. Good. Um, did I skim to the content uh, too fast? No, it's okay, it's okay. Are you working on these uh, on these topics uh, your, yourself in your daily uh, business or daily life? Uh, I personally work in a quantitative financial world, so not exactly that, but uh, uh, I can I, I I'm interested in uh, in also this topic uh, that it uh, it is more related to industrial uh, industrial world, I guess. Well, I started off my career as a quant uh, in uh, an investment bank. And, okay. Uh, I, I transitioned out of finance uh, and uh, went to, to consulting. Fine. Are you Italian? Yeah, you heard it from, from the accent, I guess. Yes. Yes, yes. Although I am currently based in, in Zurich, probably I saw that. In, in yes, yes. Uh, we have uh, we have a good team here. Um, we also have a few Italians in the team. We the Italians uh, at the moment are everywhere. We are spreading out of Italy <laughs> really fast. Yes, it's true. Cool, cool. Um, on on your side, when it comes to your your daily life, I guess uh, you are solving a lot of. Uh, optimization problems in a Markovitz sense, right? Is, is um, it what, what, what you're doing? Not so much because uh, in uh, actual uh, financial uh, quantitative strategies, uh, optimization uh, it doesn't work uh, as uh, expected, expected or as the books uh, said, say, or write, because uh, uh, financial world is characterized by a lot of uh, unexpected events in a fat tails uh, magnitude. So optimization um, is a 
is not so um, is not so uh, not is not so cheap optimization from uh, uh, an an economic point of view because uh, when you uh, optimize uh, for example an active uh, strategy in the markets uh, if uh, uh, inputs uh, are not what uh, you put in the model results uh, can change uh, drastically so uh, we work uh, personally in a more robust uh, sense than an optimized sense all right um well, uh, yeah, I think there's a, it's very interesting, the conversation when, uh, um, yeah, well, uh, I, I think one, uh, one, one thing that is interesting is uh, that uh, you, you can get to the optimization parameters uh, uh, by, by Monte Carlo. Yes. Or by, uh, by inference. And uh, in both in both setups, um, it's fine to get uh, to use uh, fat tail distributions. Yes, yes. There are well, there was a couple of uh, use cases where we have uh, in the generative model we have uh, um, estimated a an optimization parameter by uh, having also a, a couple in the middle. Okay. So what you have, uh, you have your priors here, and then uh, you have uh, you have a couple of models here, and then uh, you we were getting what we were interested in here. That then we were in turn feeding in into the optimization. Yes. Uh, I think uh, this uh, the methodological approach uh, um, is uh, is really quite uh, qu quite uh, quite flexible. Um, my, my question is, uh, when, when you were talking about uh, robust, uh, uh, what, uh, what do you mean? Uh, because when, I, when, I, when you say robust optimization, I really think about robust optimization, but maybe in uh, your domain. Yes, it's uh, outside. Different. Yes, yeah. because in my domain, uh, robust means essentially that uh, the uh, capital allocation, so the um, the capital that is uh, invested uh, in the current day in the markets uh, is a function of the current uh, volatility of the markets. So robust, uh, it means uh, more, uh, more uh, a sort of a risk management, uh, uh, risk management uh, dependency or risk management function in the sense that you have to, you have to uh, follow the estimated the risk of markets the estimated the future volatility of markets so the the model has to change um, in the in this sense so robust means uh, a, a risk management uh, optimized tool not uh, an outcome optimized tool but a, a a risk a risk metric optimized tool okay i understand I understand. It's uh, it's very interesting. It's um, and then why I guess what uh, uh, yeah and and then if it's uh, it's a, a, a capital allocation on different uh, uh, assets. Yes, so. yes. For this reason, uh, first I uh, said to you the fact that uh, the Markowitz uh, framework is not used anymore in uh, in applied finance because. Uh, it focuses more on uh, expected returns, but uh, the estimation of expected returns uh, is uh, the confidence uh, interval are very big uh, compared to the risk metrics. So we focus more on the risk measures, uh, risk metrics than the expected returns. Okay, it's very it's very interesting. The only um... Uh, I, I don't remember what it's called, but the last thing I did in between the field was uh, implementing uh, some uh, entropy portfolio allocation. It's ba it was based on the work of Meucci, but okay. that pretty much as, as far as the things. I think it was even uh, 10 years ago. Yeah, wow, time flies. Hmm. All right. Is there somebody else in the poster? 
Yeah, I have a question. Please. Yes, um, about your, the structure of your model, was it like, a, did you design it in a hierarchical manner? Or was it more like a linear combination of um, the, the demand estimation and the macroeconomic model or just if you could describe the structure a bit more? Yes. Um, in, the, in this particular setup, what we have is really a, a, a modular architecture where mm -hmm. we have uh, two uh, models. Uh, one is uh, the demand estimation, where we, we want to um, estimate the demand for a product at a given price point. So we want to draw the price quantity curve. And uh, that particular model in this case was uh, a, an ensemble of trees. Mm -hmm. Alongside that, we had uh, a, a model that was looking only at the uh, macroeconomic indicators mm -hmm. and it was uh, trying to estimate the transportation and storage costs. And uh, that model was another ensemble. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the output there was um, um, well, on one hand, we had as an optimization parameter, we had the volume that was the output of uh, the, the blue box. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had uh, the, the macroeconomic model that was uh, producing transportation and uh, storage costs. And mm -hmm. the, the, the three fed in, uh, in the um, optimization, which is the uh, pink, purple uh, box here. Mm -hmm. So that uh, the, the optimization parameter in the mixed integer linear program were um, actually par um, estimated distributions of the volume of lead times, transportation and storage. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, all these uh, helps when it comes to understanding the structure of the model and the Breaking out the things from a business perspective is easier because uh, there were also different department, different subject matter experts involved. Okay. Um, yeah. And actually, if I, I think your question is quite interesting. And uh, um, as, a, as a team, uh, we, we travel around and uh, we, we work with different companies. Uh, we see that uh, in um, across different industries, from uh, from retail to chemicals to pharma, we see that many companies have started uh, applying a time series analysis to the um, to forecast the things, transitioning from uh, pencil and pen or Excel to to have uh, some some models. Uh, some companies are a little bit more sophisticated; they were trying to uh, neural networks, but the, less, the message is companies are now having a lot of models built by different functions. You could have, for example, uh, functions from the commercial department that uh, work on uh, revenue forecasting. Then uh, you have uh, manufacturing that focusing on, uh, on cost of manufacturing. And now companies have like tons of models that are spitting out on a daily basis uh, tons of forecasts with different purposes and goals. Mm -hmm. So the way we see uh, probabilistic programming is also a way to combine existing models into one big model that uh, builds on a value driver's tree. So articulates from uh, a North Star metric. In this case, we were trying to optimize the, the, the price as uh, uh, revenues less cost, but most of the companies are primarily interested in, for example, earnings. And then earnings can be broken down as uh, as PNL items, and then PNL items can be further broken down. And in there, in that the value driver's tree with probabilistic programming, you can combine uh, um, existing uh, generative or uh, discriminative models. Okay, makes uh, makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. And um, yeah, I'm a bit new to this. Um, uh bachelor student in data science. So um, when you said the ensemble model, 
or the ensemble yeah. structure. Um, what exactly does that entail? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what, what we had, it was, um, uh, was, a, it was a either a random forest or some casing of random forest, uh, for example, uh, 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 gradient boosted uh, trees. Okay. So the, the idea is that uh, um, uh, you can have a one regression tree, but then you can have plenty of them and each tree contributes his own forecast and then the model combines all these uh, of the forecast produced by the regression trees into one uh, final forecast. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense to me. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for the random forest or uh, um, tree ensembles mm -hmm. are really, let's say, the Swiss Army knife of a data scientist in uh, in the industry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> my my uh, thanks thanks for asking uh, asking questions. Any anybody else? Yes, I have another question. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's that's fine, uh, and it's good that you feel the the awkward silence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, as I said, uh, it's the first time I do this poster session um, uh, in, a, in a virtual conference, so I, I don't really know how, uh, how this goes. <laughs> you know, when, when you are like uh, having a proper poster session in, in a physical, you you have your thing there, people come. You grab coffee and it's easy to chit chat. Uh, here I'm just, you know, I don't want to have impression. I have impression sometimes I'm, st uh, yeah, I would, or either I got disconnected or something. But yeah. Bad, sorry. No, it's fine. Yeah, I'm also a bit like new to this online video chat. I normally don't do, uh, haven't done too much video conferencing on this. I but, guess um, we have to get used to it, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I have a question about the drivers um, because I'm I'm also currently working on an internship and I'm also applying um, Bayesian uh, modeling as well, Bayesian machine learning. Yeah. Um, but it's more like in marketing and sales uh, context. So I was curious as to how, how do you identified your key drivers? If it was mostly through like domain knowledge or if you used um, like a, a how you say a Cartesian uh, like Cartesian grid search or um, how you determine the most important or most salient uh, drivers? Yeah, it's uh, it's a very it's a it's a mix of both. Um, let's say let, let, let's say that uh, over over the um, uh, over the years, mm -hmm. a, as a team, we have uh, put together a, a repository a time series data store where we keep track uh, if I'm, I'm talking now about external drivers mm -hmm. so for example um, price intelligence um, microeconomic data uh, from for example sector views or macroeconomic indices which you can pull from for example a bloomberg or reuters or capital like you so we have a number of uh, data data sources we consolidate the, the time series in a time series data store we have a lot of them and with that we have a good starting point mm -hmm. and then when uh, when when we approach a new client uh we have, we organize a workshop and we get the different uh, different subject matter experts from different areas of the company and we ask them the question, where, what do you think drives your business? Mm -hmm. And then if we don't have uh, that particular driver, we try either to find it or to proxy. And then what, what you end up having is, uh, is it, it's a data store that contains tons of uh, external drivers. Then uh, you have to connect uh, to, their, if you, uh, to their ERP system. And uh, what you do, you pull out uh, 
things like this historical sales data. Um, at least most of our clients are with SAP. And uh, then we have our data extractor and the thing goes relatively smooth. And then uh, probably you're gonna have also other, other uh, silos in a company where you can find information about, for example, market. And uh, then once you have all these, the, the question is, uh, uh, from a modeling perspective, uh, how do you weed out the, the signals that uh, don't matter? Or from a modeling perspective, uh, there's uh, also the, the question of, uh, if you have uh, signals and signals don't matter, or signals co-integrate or correlate, does this hurt? So you have to understand a little bit the model you're using and the handle this, this situation. Okay. I think what maybe if, uh, if you're looking at the, uh, at the topic, one other thing that uh, I think it's very interesting from, from my perspective is the featureization of uh, marketing and promotional data. So mm -hmm. if I, if, if you if just to spend a couple of words on these uh, without going too much in detail, I, what, the, what I see is that the, most of the companies uh, sort of like know when they send, for example, uh, or start promotional campaigns online, mm -hmm. but they don't really know from a quantitative perspective how they're doing it. So what, what, what I've been doing for in a number of projects is uh, helping clients, uh, for example, go through their email, Mm -hmm. campaigns or Twitters or LinkedIn and, lot, and extract features out of that. One feature, for example, could be how many characters. Then there are like a matrix that describe the complexity of the language. You can see online that they, uh, how they are analyzing and comparing the performance or well, the, the complexity of the language used by different US presidents from Trump to uh, JFK, and uh, then what you can uh, you're gonna build also then uh, uh, features around uh, the, the promotional campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen that also. Um, like, there's some initiative in uh, the company where I'm working to do that, but the problem is there's like not enough data scientists. <laughs> so, yeah, they should hire a consultant then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know, it's pretty exciting, but I've also noticed the research itself, it's still a bit, I mean, at least from what I've, I've seen, it's still a bit um, immature in terms of how it's exactly to, to quantify the impact of these new, um, of like any marketing um, outreach, you know, for attribution models and things it's like that, I chair. Yeah, attribution models are, uh, well, one, uh, Attribution models are uh, at the moment still an alchemy. I think see many companies that, for example, uh, sort of like a random guess uh, the, the attribution strategy that they have in place. Mm -hmm. First touch, a second touch, and touch. Uh, it's, uh, um, yeah, from a modeling perspective, I think uh, if you look at applied machine learning, that's definitely a field that is ripe for, uh, for innovation. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I want. Uh, I, I thought I heard somebody saying something on the background. No, never mind. Sorry. Um. Uh, anyway, any the, any other question? Um. Hello. Yes. We are actually doing something very similar in our company, but from the buyer side, let's say, because if I understand correctly, this is for um, the selling side, like you produce a product and then to put the optimal price on the product eventually, right? Um, well, in this specific case, uh, we had a man in the middle. It was a company that was buying from a manufacturer and then uh, uh, selling as a distributor to a company that would in turn resell it. So it was, a, let's say, a rather uh, not vertically consolidated uh, industry. But uh, we have used a very similar 
modeling approach in, uh, for example, uh, la- um, fashion uh, and the luxury, mm-hmm. where it's a company that uh, manufactures and then uh, sells B2C with their own stores and B2B to s- stores that going to then in turn resell. Yeah, yeah. Because what we noticed is very often there is a specific demands actually when yeah you uh, have to s- get suppliers or so for your current production, but then only the macroeconomic model is the variable input. Um, and um, so, yeah. and I was wondering um, the next step in the optimization how you use this because I missed that part of the uh, presentation a bit with the stochastic programming during the optimization step, is it kind of an iterative process or uh, how do you yeah, really take into the model for optimizing these Bayesian outputs of the machine learning from the step before? Yeah, good point. Um, uh, so I guess uh, uh, you, you're asking what happens in the um, purple uh, pink box. Yeah, because we use actually the same solver, I think. and. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that this is possible or uh, how to do that. Oh, we can have, we can have, a, uh, this is a very good, uh, good question. And I think, uh, um, I mean, on my side, I, I hope I'm very, very interested about the topic. So I'm happy, I would be happy also to connect after this poster session. But then there are uh, um, dif- two, two different ways to go. Um, so what, what you have is, uh, um, as I understand that you have a solver that does, for example, uh, this has the capacity to solve uh, mixed integer linear programs. We yes. work a lot with Groby. I guess you have with Groby. If you're not with Groby, you're with CPLEX or we are with something open source. Um, then once, once you're there, um, so you, you can start uh, with a, 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 a standard mixed integer linear program. But mm-hmm. now what you have is um, for a, um, your optimization parameters, you don't have uh, your point estimate, but you have a distribution. So one way to do, uh, to solve a problem is to encode the problem with a robust optimization where you write a deterministic equivalent of your, of your uh, MIP program taking into account the, um, the information that you can uh, extract, for example, the first and second moments from, from the, the distribution. So the mm-hmm. idea of a robust optimization is something that comes from engineering in a nutshell is imagine you have, uh, you have to, uh, to build a bridge. Uh, it has to care, be able to load the 10 cars at the same time. How do you optimize? Uh, one optimization parameter is uh, like how much weight goes on the bridge and the robust optimization says, well, you have the, the a uncertainty set and the uncertainty set is how much I expect these 10 cars to weight plus a safety. <coughs> the stochastic programming approach is uh, for every, um, you can, for example, run um, a Monte Carlo simulation. So you are approximating by Monte Carlo your distribution, and then you say, <coughs> sorry, from um, from an um, optimization perspective, you want uh, your MLEAP program to satisfy the constraints for all the points in the data set. <coughs> and if you like, you can um, set it up as um, um, in a way where constraints can also be satisfied from a <clears throat> um, soft uh, sense, soft constraints mm-hmm. or in probability sense. Yes. So you have a chance of breaking the constraints, but then since it's uh, from a Monte Carlo, hopefully the yeah most important ones you will m- most of the time not violate because there's so many of these samples. Well, what you want to say, or what... <clears throat> in the a robust optimization perspective, what you have is, um, is a constraint that is a hard constraint mm-hmm. on the uncertainty set. In stochastic programming, you can use your data points 
and uh, then you can uh, you can your uh, rewrite uh, your simulate your data points from the simulation, and then you can encode a program where you can uh, use the information uh, on uh, the full fully characterized probability distribution, so that you can uh, recode uh, your uh, your mixed integer program uh, in a way where you can have, uh, for example, uh, you can tune your uh, um, uh, utility function on one hand and on the other hand side uh, you can say you can also by having information on fully characterized probability distribution um, set a constraint in a way which is satisfied soft satisfied so the constraints uh, holds 80 percent of the time yeah yeah that sounds very interesting yeah. thanks a lot thanks um yeah it's um it's a um, quite uh, quite a broad uh, broad subject. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I covered everything uh, in a very rigorous way. There's some hand waving the way I presented. I just was trying to communicate uh, um, the um, let's say the big picture while trying not to choke. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, of course. but if you like, uh, um, this is something that um, I'm very quite passionate about. So we can uh, touch base after the. Uh, after the session. Yes, gladly. Uh, thanks a lot. My, my pleasure. Um, any other, any, any other, um, any other question? Oh, there are also questions on, uh, on the Discord. I'm going to look at them later. Hi, Matthew. Hi. Vijay here. Yeah, hi, hi. How are you doing? Yeah, fine. How are you? Um, fine, fine. Uh, uh, it's been a quite, a, quite an interesting uh, poster session. So, th and thanks for dialing, by the way. Yeah, not to be comparative, but uh, another track is very quiet while yours is buzzing with uh, questions. Another poster track is uh, quiet. Good, uh, um, good. Uh, that well. Um, yeah, no, I do really appreciate the questions because uh, um, no, it's been a very good, uh, good audience. Yeah, Matty. Uh, quick question. I was going through the references you had provided at the right bottom corner. Yeah. Uh, found somewhere that uh, your company helps in organizing the sports events. Uh, how is these things possible? Um, can, can you, can you add some color to your, uh, to your question? Like, uh, how would the, how would the problem setup look like? Okay. Uh, not sure. It means, uh, there was a reference PDF file to study use case scheduling of uh, sporting events. Yeah. KPMG has uh, strong credentials in scheduling of sporting events in uh, Switzerland and internationally. Yes, this is, yeah, we have been doing uh, sports schedules for, for quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. my, my question was, was about uh, um, what, uh, we, we have a few minutes, happy to stay also longer in the channel if this is possible. But uh, what, what would you like, would you like me to give you like an idea of how we structure a model? Or are you interested in some specific? Uh... No, means this is the first time I heard that machine learning can be used for uh scheduling the events uh, uh, just an overview it's, i'm not a programmer i'm from uh, electronics perspective well oh, okay i understand the question um so um gen uh, generally um most of the schedules that we have tackled uh the um, scheduling problem was an operation research problem so what we're talking about, a mixed integer linear program. Um, we are also, uh, by the way, we, are, we also presented at the scientific conference about how we do uh, schedule optimization with a mixed integer linear program uh, um, five or six months ago. So perhaps if you like, after, after this session, I can, I can send you the, the material. Yeah, please. Uh, that is uh, interesting. And um, 
where does uh, machine learning come into play? Um, I think there in the sports industry, we have a very similar setup where we use uh, generative models to estimate the probability distributions of uh, key um, optimization parameters. And uh, for example, one of the classic use cases that we had with the sports uh, organization is uh, they would like to understand demand better. Where demand is uh, number of viewers for an event when the, the competition is streamed and the number of uh, attendants that will be able to join physically. Makes so sense. what, so that, what yeah. we do is we take uh, historical data about the, the competition, about the event, um, sales data, for example, streaming data with the partners, such as, for example, I don't know, the YouTube's equivalent. And uh, um, what, what we do there is we build a model that says, hey, uh, this is what we expect demand to be. And then based on that and based on other constraints, such as the availability of a location, the cost of renting a location, because often that also is, is varying. Yeah. We have uh, the mixed integer program, mixed integer linear program that then produces the, the answer. That totally makes sense. I'm very happy means. So this is the first time uh, where I heard how to use machine learning before organizing something. <laughs> Uh, it's yeah, really, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a very, yeah, no, I understand. It's, uh, it's something relatively new. Uh, the classical approach is a deterministic mixed integer linear program. Um, one, one other element which is interesting uh, is that, uh, well, most of the time you end up having a, not just one solution, but you end up having several solutions, several optimal solutions on the frontier. And uh, this is because uh, when, when it comes to scheduling, one of the biggest challenges is that you generate a multi-objective optimization. Uh, you have uh, KPIs like, for example, travel, but uh, you also have KPIs re related to the fairness. And the getting into fairness is a very tricky problem. Uh, fairness can be quantified in different ways. Uh, one way is, for example, if you have an event where the competition sees home and away games, what you want to have is a schedule where as much as possible you have a, a pattern home away, home away, home away. But the, now with the, the sports federations are looking at also other factors, such as, for example, the estimation of the impact of travel on the uh, players, wow. on the athletes. And this is, again, a machine learning topic where you start from certain information about the, the traveling and you try also to... Uh, the, the sports team now are really uh, getting into the quantified self perspective. So they are using uh, devices to track uh, uh, phys physiological data about the players. And based on that and information about the traveling schedules, the federation is asking, for example, what is the impact of, uh, uh, for example, uh, jet lag? Yeah. All right. What are routines? So this is where, where we stand with respect to, to sport federations. Yeah. If, Thanks, um, if you ping me on, uh, even on LinkedIn, if possible, uh, I'd be happy to, to share some, uh, some material with you. I will definitely, uh, though I took you off the track uh, from your posters, uh, you gave a very pretty, in, good insight. I'm very Thank happy. You. Thanks. Thanks. Um, uh, plus, uh, I definitely would like to learn about the mathematics. Uh, means uh, most often we use machine learning with uh, algorithms which are uh, pre-written, uh, completely defined and all. Uh, how mathematics will be helpful, uh, I'll get to learn from you. Sounds good. Happy to stay in touch. I, I, I like these events because they are also a, an opportunity to, to network. Yes, so, sure. thank you. Cool stuff.
Cool. I think I'm uh, uh, I'm uh, out of time, but uh, nobody is uh, is pinging me to to stop. So if uh, if if you guys if you guys or girls or ladies or no, I have, the, uh, have, the, I have other questions. Uh, just off the record and on a lighter note, uh, this is the best session what uh, I have seen from the morning. We can interact, right? Uh, Others were little passive. Yeah, look, it's uh, yeah, there's a uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's uh, interaction uh, element which is which is interesting. It's uh, all other talk tracks are uh, one-sided. Means questions will be collected in the chats and uh, answered at the end. Yeah, and, uh, we have the regular talks. Um, yeah. We have the regular talks as well. But uh, this this time I wanted to to try out uh, something uh, new, so, uh, something new, which is uh, being there and presenting on a, a poster, poster, uh, virtual. Uh, thanks. See you cool. again. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, so where can we find any material about your, I would say, your presentation, like even like concrete? More concrete examples. Do you have like a, like I would say like project to, to share about the, the topic, for example? Um, I have put something super high level here, yeah. and uh, if you click, uh, you can see something something more. Uh, but and uh, I, but I also have uh, been given some talks, and I have presentations uh, material online. Um, I, I have quite uh, some stuff on my on my LinkedIn, and uh, but I, I can also s uh, share the things with you uh, on uh, on the Discord channel, perhaps. Okay, yeah, would be great. I was Discord, given so... I was given a chat a, a talk about uh, uh, kind of like the, this very same uh, um, model setup and use case at Groby Days. And I believe that uh, they have, the, the, uh, Kurobi has put something online. Yeah, this is my, my full talk about this, uh, this use case. But I'm gonna share the link with, uh, with you as well. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, look, guys, con connect with me. Happy to stay in touch, uh, share yeah. share ideas. It doesn't really have to be on the advanced stuff. Also, if you if you have just just random questions, just uh, contact. Okay, I think we're all gonna add you on LinkedIn. <laughs> that would be <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Do that. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the Thank presentation. You. My 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 pleasure. My pleasure. Bye, Matthew. Bye. I, actually, I think I'm, I'm out of time, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be reachable also on on, uh, on Discord. So. Discord. Yeah. yeah th thank you, and, and enjoy the event. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you.